Once the modeling work is completed, you will need to export the data files from the model data and animation files in order to incorporate the model into a game and an application. The following files can be exported by Live2D Cubism. Texture Atlas, MOC3 file, Physics3 JSON file, and Motion3 JSON file. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing the process of exporting necessary files from Live2D Cubism for external applications. We will be introducing some steps that were not mentioned in the basic tutorial, including some procedures prior to exporting. We will also be learning how to handle the following situations. SDK version changes, defining parameters that operate blinking and lip syncing, and making model adjustments to avoid causing the third-party application to overload. The first step is to check the target SDK version. Let's check it from the drop-down menu in the upper left corner of the editor. The target version needs to be set for which SDK to be in use. The available functions for each SDK version may vary. For example, the invert mask function implemented in Cubism 4.0 can only be used in environments with the SDK version 4.0 or later and are not compatible with the version 3.3 or earlier. This means if you try to import a model created in the later version into an older SDK version, it may not be integrated correctly. The model may not be displayed or may perform incorrectly in the application. This is the reason why it's important to select the target version and export the model files that are suitable for the target SDK version. It is also recommended that you check the SDK version and the functions that can be used before starting the creation of a model, as each SDK version supports different features. We recommend you decide on which target version before starting on the model. However, it is possible to change the target version anytime, even if the model is already completed. First, select the version you want from the top left drop-down menu. The Model Target Version Selection dialog box will be displayed. Choose the SDK version here and click OK. This completes the setting changes for the target version. Next, we will check on model specifications. From the File menu, click on Model Statistics. In this panel, you'll be able to see the number of polygons and clippings used in this model. The model data size scales with the number of polygons. This may cause overloading issues when rendering the model in other applications. When using multiple models in one application, the ideal number of polygons should be between 4,000 and 5,000 per model that are front-facing. If there are multiple arms for posing, it should be around 6,000. If it's for an animated CG, it should also be around 6,000. Similarly for the number of clippings, the greater the number of clippings, the bigger the size. The mask ID permutation type is the number of R meshes that are used as masks. For a standard front-facing model, the recommendation is to settle around 2 to 5 masks. The next step is to create a texture atlas. A texture atlas is an image of all the parts that make up a character laid out on a map. This image is necessary before exporting. It is for the live 2D SDK applications to use. For a standard model, the texture atlas size should be either 2048 by 2048 pixels or 4096 by 4096 pixels. The size and number of texture atlases also affect the application resource consumption. You should check with the application and its developer to find out what the ideal texture atlas size is. Now let's create a texture atlas. Click Edit Texture Atlas from the toolbar. This will open the new Texture Atlas settings box. Set the width and height of the atlas and set the initial placement to displayed model images. Live2D then creates a texture atlas with the model images automatically placed. Automatic layout arranges model images on the map at the optimal scale for the available size. Notice that some images might not be scaled to 100% size. The smaller the scale percentage, the lower the resolution for that particular part to render in the application. If you want to increase the resolution of your models, you should manually rearrange the scale and position of the model parts on the atlas. Click on the image to select an image piece. While it's selected, adjust the size as needed. You can quick drag to select multiple pieces in an area, or click while holding down shift to add to the selection. When you resize images, they may overlap each other. 
This will cause issues with the model display. Rotate and move the images to ensure the blue areas do not overlap. You can add more texture map. Click on add texture. Once you add a new texture, return to the first texture and click on any model image. Click the new texture again, and this brings the selected image to the new texture. You can add more textures whenever you need more space to fit in all the model images. However, larger texture size and number requires more processing power on the application to use your model. Once you are finished with organizing the textures, click OK. This completes the creation of the texture atlas. The next step is to set the model's blinking and lip sync settings. If you want to programmatically operate blinking and lip sync through the SDK, you will need to make these settings on the model source before exporting. If the application does not require auto blinking or lip sync settings, you may skip this part. Click on the menu button at the top right of the parameter palette. Click on the settings for eye blink and lip sync to open the dialog box. Add a check to all the parameters you want to be operated by blinking or lip syncing. By checking the boxes, you will be able to control blinking and lip sync on the SDK. Click OK to complete the blink and lip sync settings. The next step is to check and organize the model parts. There are no definitive rules for the parts configuration. However, if the model has arm swaps for different poses, it is necessary to separate the arms to be able to toggle on and off. Having the arm parts separated and animated in the motion file, along with a JSON file storing the settings, allow the arms to be operated by the motion file. This is the reason why you need to separate parts for each arm. When separating the parts, it is recommended that the parts for each arm are grouped into folders. The next step is to organize the IDs of the parts and parameters. It's not mandatory to organize the IDs, but if IDs are standardized, it would be easier to manage, and you'd be able to reuse motion files for models that are built similarly. Click on the menu button at the top of the parts palette, then click on part settings to open the part settings dialog box. The name and part ID of the created part are displayed in a list. You can enter or change the ID by double-clicking on it. After changing the ID, click OK to apply the changes. For the parameter settings, on the same menu, click and select parameter settings. A dialog box with the parameter names and IDs will be displayed in a list, and you can enter or change the ID by double-clicking on it. Double-click on the ID part to enter or change it. When assigning IDs, it's easier to understand if the IDs are numbered, such as R, L for right, left, and A, B, C for parts that need to be interchangeable. Lastly, let's talk about setting collision detection. The collision detection is a setting that designates if a certain section of the model responds when it is clicked or tapped. With this feature, we can set portions of the model's body to respond by executing an animation. To create a hitbox, we will have to create an art mesh for collision detection. From the modeling menu in Art Mesh, click Create Art Mesh for Collision Detection. You'll see an empty art mesh with no content added to the canvas. This is the art mesh for collision detection. Adjust the created art mesh to the appropriate size and move it to where you want it to be. Place the mesh into a warp deformer that holds the movement of the part. If you only leave the art mesh out, the hitbox would be out of place when the model moves around. You will also need to add the art mesh to the texture atlas. Open the texture atlas editor. You can see the collision detection art mesh you created is added to the list of images for the model on the right side of the dialog, so double click it to place it onto the texture atlas. If a texture atlas has already been created at the time you create the collision detection, don't forget to edit the texture atlas and add the art mesh in. These are the things to check and configure before exporting the model files. Be sure to save the file that has been edited. In the next episode, we will set up the physics configuration so that the hair and cloth objects can sway in accordance with the movement of the character.